and welcome to another Friday reading vlog from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. Happy Friday. Is there anything nicer than a brushed cotton sheet in the chilly times? Not in the summer time, it'd be too hot in the summer. But in the winter times, oh God, I'm loath to get out of bed. Although it's the 1st of March today, so today is the 1st of March, meaning spring is on its way. I don't mind the spring. I feel like, I mean, Summer's still my least favourite, but I'm, I'm getting there with it. Um, I mean, last year we didn't have a particularly hot summer, so maybe that's why I felt a little bit more inclined towards it. Let's see how I feel this year when we get a couple of 42 heat days. But yeah, spring's coming, 1st of March, 1st of a new month, new start. Exciting. Hope you're all feeling excited too. So, first day of a Friday reading vlog saying it's spring today it is so wet and rainy and windy out there it's what I like to call perfect reading weather so I imagine there'll be quite a lot of reading done this weekend hopefully um I haven't got a book with me at the moment because it's I finished my book yesterday I finished Belladonna by Ambara Salam and I knew that today was the first of March and I knew that I would want in, wanting to start some Irish books for the Irish Readathon, which takes part throughout March, takes place throughout March. And then on Tuesday, the announcement of the Women's Prize for Fiction long list is out. So March is always an amazingly exciting reading month for me because I've already picked a TBR for the Irish Readathon. And then the Women's Prize for Fiction long list comes out, which is 16 books written by female authors um, from the end of last, uh, from the end of from the 1st of April last year till the end of March this year, like the financial year, I think. Um, and that's so exciting, seeing what I've got of those on my shelves, what I've read already, getting some books out from the library and stuff like that. So that'll all kick off next week. So at the moment, I'm wondering whether or not I'm going to do a predictions video for it because I haven't scheduled a predictions video. I'm going to do a reactions video, which is going to be a live show on Tuesday. I mean, this will all have happened. So I'll link all the videos down below. I have got a list of 15 predictions, so whether or not I can think of one more, and then if I want to do a little bonus video for Monday, which I might want to do. I have been very much enjoying watching people's predictions videos, because not only has it made me excited for the prize, it's made me excited for books I've heard about on there, even if they're not on the long list. So yeah, so that's a, that's a question mark this weekend, whether or not I'm going to do that. I mean, by the time you're watching this, maybe you've already seen it, if, it, if it's been out, or maybe I didn't do one. Like I said, I'm going to be picking up some new books today, some Irish books. Um, I want to pick up a fiction and a non-fiction Irish book and make a start on both of those. I need to sort all my clothes out because I'm doing this clothes challenge, outfit challenge, where I'm wearing a different outfit for every day of the year without buying anything new. Um, I can buy secondhand if I want and I have bought um, two secondhand items this month. No, I bought those in January, I think. Yeah, I bought those in January. Um, but this month, as a sort of additional challenge, I thought maybe I'd pull everything green out of my wardrobe and put it on this rail and then wear green for the month or just an aspect of green in each of my outfits because Irish Readathon, St. Patrick's Day, the colours of the Women's Prize are green. And I thought, oh yeah, maybe that would just be a bit interesting just to wear green for a month or, or aspects of green for a month. Um, an additional challenge within a challenge so I think I'm going to do that as well get everything out then obviously there's a few chores to do I've got a Tesco shop coming between 11 and 12 and I'm going to be making oh do you know what should we go into the lounge and talk about this because Daphne's about to have a poo <laughs> and um, then I can pick books and we can pick the question and I can show you the cake and all sorts let's do that I think yeah you may well have seen my uh, Irish readathon TBR put some slippers on to keep my tootsies warm um but they're in that top shelf there so like I said I want one fiction one non-fiction there's so much I'm excited about so I don't really know where to well I do sort of know where to start with the fiction let me go and pick so I think I'm going to pick The Amendments by Neve Mulvey which isn't even out yet um it's out in April so it's out next month this also needs sorting at some point, doesn't it, the state of it. So I think that's going to be my fiction. See how I get on with that. And the non-fiction, 
I've got Diary of the Naturist, Naturalist, Diary of a Young Naturalist that I've been wanting to read for a while, but also You Don't Know What War Is by Yeva Skalietska. Maybe I'll start with You Don't Know What War Is. That's upside down. And then obviously we need Year of Wonder, a poem for every spring day. The questions and... I better go and get the cookbook as well to show you what cake I'm making. We're both quite into that Beyonce song. Like everyone is. I really have got so much reading time on my hands today, which is very, very exciting. Um, not only is it wet and horrible outside, like looking out that window is just like lovely and rainy and like just ready to, re to, to read all day. But David's going to the cinema with my dad, I think about five o'clock to watch the new Dune film, which I have zero interest in. We watched the last Dune film with my dad. Dune is my dad's favorite book. But um, I just didn't know what was going on <laughs> the whole time. Even with my dad there explaining to me, I didn't know what was going on. Um, so David and my dad are going to watch that. So, and I think it's about three hours long. So I've got all of that reading time as well, which will be lovely. And then when David gets back, David um, had quite a big job on at work this week. Um, and he absolutely excelled in it. I mean, of course he did. So as a treat, I said he could pick whatever he wanted for dinner on Friday and I would cook it for him for when he got back from the cinema. And he picked, which I'm delighted about, <laughs> because I'm really excited, from our gusto recipes, because we, we often remake gustos. Um, baked meatball, uh, baked meat-free mince meatballs with tomato sauce and linguine. So there's a few ad adaptations to this because I've already bought the fake, they're the Naked Chef meatballs from Tesco's. Um, there's no linguine, it's whole wheat spaghetti. But yeah, the rest of it will be as it is, baked. Sounds nice, doesn't it? So I'll be doing that. So yeah, we often make, we remake our um, gustos. I always leave my information for gustos down below if you'd like to try it out. Highly recommend. We'll be getting, we haven't had it for a few weeks actually because we've had stuff on. But we have got some arriving tomorrow, so I'll show you what I get tomorrow as well and tell you what the deal is. Um, but yeah, looking forward to making that tonight. And then whilst we're on the subject of making, uh, we're in the last of the tray bakes because I've been working my way through um, the sweet roasting tin, making a cake every time I do one of these Friday reading vlogs, which has been lovely because I'm not great at baking. I'm really good at following a recipe um, and making nice stuff. And I feel like I'm getting a little bit better about pairing stuff and like if I've got stuff in the fridge, what can I do with that? But baking has never been a forte of mine, so I thought I'd work, work my way through this um, and get some skills under my belt. But yeah, so we're, and I have been working my way through, and we just got to the end of the tray bake, which weirdly is a, a gluten-free, I say weirdly, it's a gluten-free recipe using gram flour, which isn't arriving until between 11 and 12 today, because I've got a Tesco order come in. Um, but I did gluten-free, because I've been suffering with tummy ache, haven't I? Tummy pains and diarrhea, and no, not so much diarrhea, constipation, in fact. Um, and I tried a week of gluten-free last week and then I'm back on doing a normal week this week and then next week I'll try something else. Maybe soy? Um, and I'm doing a food diary and everything, but yeah, so it would have been helpful if I'd have made these last week, but yeah, if these end up being lovely, then I can make them again when it is gluten-free week again. But these are spiced carrot and coconut cake. I love carrot cake and I love coconut. And the annoying thing about this is that when I did my Tesco order, I ordered these lovely little um, carrots that can go on top of it. And then I saw them in B&M and I was like, shall I get them? And I was like, no, 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 I've already put them on my Tesco order. Well, when I went to add a few things to my Tesco order yesterday, they've been removed. So instead of having little carrots, I'm gonna have little flowers on them, which is disappointing. And in fact, I think the flowers might even not be gluten-free. So maybe that isn't gluten-free, but yeah. So I'll be making those today. Then the two books I picked, as I said, are both from Irish authors. This is called The Amendments by Neve Mulvey. I've got a um, short story collection by Neve Mulvey. This has been blurbed by Emma Donoghue on the front. A smart, subtle, engrossing, a, mo a moving novel that gives voice to so much that's unspoken about Ireland and about youth. 
So it says here, now when her partner Adrienne are about to have a baby, for Adrienne it's the start of a new life, and now it's the reason the two of them can, are sitting in the therapist office, because she can't go into this without dealing with the truth, that she's been a mother before, and now she can hardly bring herself to speak to her own mother, let alone return home to Ireland. But to Ireland is where she must go, to the heat of her teenage years in the early 2000s, as Ireland unpicks itself from its faith, to 1983 where her mother Dolores grapples with the tensions of the women's rights movement, and finally to the farms and suburbs and towns that, make, that made and unmade the lives at the centre of this story, bound together by the terrible secret Nell still cannot face. Delving into the lives of three women in a changing island, The Amendments is an extraordinary novel about love and freedom, belonging and rebellion, and about how our past is a vital present which sits alongside us. Sounds great. And then this is You Don't Know What War Is, uh, The Diary of a Young Girl from Ukraine uh, by Yeva Skalietska. And this is the diary of a young girl from Ukraine who is now, um, who is now living in Ireland. Um, so it says here, on Thursday the 24th of February 2022, 12-year-old uh, Yeva Skalietska is woken by the sound of explosions. Though there have been rumblings and rumours, few truly believe that war will break out between Russia and Ukraine, and yet it has. What follows are 12 days that will change Yeva's life forever. At first, Yeva and her granny rush to take shelter from the missile attacks in a dusty, crowded basement. But when the situation around them worsens, they know they need to find somewhere safer to stay. This will mean they will have to make some very hard decisions, decisions which will mean leaving everything they know and love behind. Throughout it all, Yeva kept this diary, partly to document what was happening around her and partly to give herself something to focus on as bombs rained down on her beloved home. So yeah, there we go. So those are the two books that I'll be reading today. Um, oh, also, my reading challenge, there's a chat. There we go and get it. My reading challenge that my wonderful friend Jen made me that I've been doing very, very well with, one of them is read an arc read an arc so if i finish this don't do a bit of hoovering don't know what he's hooping up then i get this plays um so yeah so that's what i'm gonna be working to so i need to finish that this weekend but like i said plenty of time for reading uh then we've also got uh at some point we didn't do this last time at some point we'll listen to a piece of classical music um, from A Year of Wonder and then have a little chat about that and then also we'll finish off by reading a poem from every spring day because we're now in spring it's excited isn't it so the question for today so if you've not been here before I asked a question at the top of the video we spend the video tinking about it and then we answer it below so you guys can answer in the comments we really are We've got six left. What are David's hoovering for? What are you hoovering for, David? Uh, what are you hoovering for? Just some of the, um, uh, the little bits. Little bits. Okay, so we'll pick On the Road. If you could accompany any fictional character on their journey, quest, voyage or adventure, who would you choose? Oh, lots of journey, quest, voyages and adventures to think about, isn't there? Quite a lot of peril in a lot of them. Ooh, I don't know what I'd pick. This one's a thing. Not, sometimes when I read the questions, I have the answer instantly. If you could accompany any fictional character on their journey, quest, voyage or adventure, who would you choose? I will need to think about that. Because I don't want much peril. I want a voyage, quest or adventure which involves just going and eating lots of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, sit and having early nights. <laughs> can I think of anything like that? If you can, let me know. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea and then start on the amendments. The first line of which is, London, tw January 2018. The atmosphere in the room is deeply familiar. There we go. So yeah, this is last month's clothes. So I wore iterations of all of these things. Um, there'll be some stuff that I won't, because I'm wearing a different outfit every day this year. There'll be some stuff that I won't be able to wear again because I, there's no other way I can style this other than having worn it. I wore it to my friend's 10 year wedding anniversary party. So I think I'll actually, I'm getting a pile of stuff that I can slip away until next year. I had a lovely time wearing that. Uh, anything else that can't be worn? Oh yeah, same as this. I wore this. I had quite a few things on this month. This was, I wore to my nan's 80th birthday party. And again, it's one of my favourite dresses ever. I bought it from Marks and Spencer's, God, a good few years ago. Six or seven years ago, maybe even longer than that. Um, and yeah, it can't really be styled anywhere else, so that's going away as well. That's the thing with dresses, isn't it? Although saying that, this dress I wore with a red 
not here, like a red roll neck underneath and then red tights. And I think it looked completely different as to if I was to wear it on its own. So that can go back in the cupboard. And then I'm going to get out all my green bits. <clears throat> I'll put it back in, but I'll put it towards the end. I'll put on that so that can't. Just for <clears throat> something I wore last month that I won't be able to style any other way. So that can go in the pile of stuff to be popped away until next year. But yeah, so also there'll be some stuff in here now that I want to wash. So I don't, I'm trying not to wash my clothes as much as well. So I've been leaving washing denims and things until the end of the month. Um, so they can all go in the wash now. So that's four, two pairs of jeans, a pair of uh, dungarees and a pair of rainbow jeans. All my belts can go on the back of the door. So it's just to sort of keep an idea of what I'm, what I'm wearing and what I'm not wearing. Cause I'm trying, like I said, Try and wear a different outfit every day. It's just easier to have things so I know what I've worn when I put it on here. So when I get all my green stuff out, and you'll see me do that, I'm gonna put everything so that the coat hanger is facing that way. And then when I've worn it, I can wear it this way and then I can work out different ways of styling it. So let's get rid of all of these and then I'll get all of my green bits out in the wash. Well, I can't actually believe how many green clothes I've got. <laughs> this is my dresses alone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a week's worth of outfit there alone. And then I've got all of these tops, jumpers, t-shirts, shirts. So quite a lot to be getting on with. Some of these things aren't exclusively green, i.e. this t-shirt, but it has got Agatha Christie written on it in green. And this has also got other colours, but I feel like when I look at it, I see green. But that will go, I sometimes wear that with these green trousers. So I've got a green and a knitted green skirt. Oh, I've got a green jumper skirt. I won't be able to wear them together because I've already worn it. And then there's another shirt. Oh, no, two more shirts. Oh, and a little woolly thing underneath. My mum has just fixed a um, green skirt for me. It's not fixed. Oh, taking it in a bit. So, yeah, so I've got enough to be getting on with. And obviously, like, I'll be alternating these with like jeans and denim skirts and some other stuff. Um, so yeah, so I think I've got enough green to be getting on with there. And obviously I'm in green already. March is, in terms of weather, like I remember last, the end of last March, we had some very warm days and it's the Easter weekend. Easter bank holiday weekend is the last weekend in March this year. So I've included things like this, which are sleeveless. This David's mum, you might've seen, I think I've, put this in one of the videos recently. David's mum had this under her bed and hadn't worn it um, and asked me if I wanted it. So there's every chance I could maybe wear this in March because although it's sleeveless, but then at the same time, at the moment, if I were to leave the house, I'd want a jumper on. So we've got lots of span of weathers, but yeah, this is today's green outfit. And I've got, I own this in pink as well. I've had them many years. Um, and I like that I can wear it with different tops underneath, sometimes no tops underneath, different belts, um, roll it up with a pair of um, trainers or have it down with a pair of boots, jumper over the top with the thing kind of, so there's, although it's an all-in-one, I get much more use out of this in terms of styling it than I would do a dress. But then I might be able to wear some of these dresses like with a jumper over the top. Although this feels quite Christmassy to me, so there's part of me that thinks, well, maybe I should hang on to that until nearer the end of the year. But like things like this, I've got a denim waistcoat I could maybe style over the top and wear a different belt with it. Just see what I can get out of it. And I've done my hair in a very cute high ponytail like I'm at primary school. Um, but yeah, showered, washed, read a little bit more of my book. Um, and that's it, David's just made me a cup of tea. So I think I'll go back and sit, oh no. The washing's finished, so I better put the washing out. And Daphne's out of the shower, aren't you, Daphne? She loves going in the shower, she's got a really wet bum. She loves sitting in the shower afterwards, just looking at the shower as it drips. Exciting for her. Right, I'm gonna go and put the washing out. That lovely push and pull of like, you always felt like you were leaving something on the table if you didn't go up that track now. Yeah. Can't believe it, how bright and lovely it is out there now. Good news, although I don't know how it happened. The little chocolatey carrots did arrive <laughs> to go on top of the cake I'm going to bake, even though they weren't on there, so strange. 
Um, so yeah, here we are. Spice carrot and coconut cake is what we're making. I mean, it looks so cute. I just said to my dad, oh, I'll make you some, um, I'll give you a bit of cake so you can take it to cinema with you. He went, what cake is it? And I said, carrot and co coconut. He said, mm. So, looking forward to making cakes for the ones I love. Just getting the bits I need. Olive oil, soft dark brown sugar. And this was such a sense of accomplishment when I'm using stuff that I've already used. Because previously baking, I just used to buy, every time I bought, like bake something, I'd just buy everything. Well, I've got a whole cupboard of stuff, so I'm very good at checking now. Three medium free range eggs. I've got 12, but only need three of those. Uh, 400 grams of grated carrot. Oh, where's that gone then? We've had a little rearrange and I don't know where the scales are. Oh no, where are the scales? I assume that's 400 grams. I'm not sure I've got a meat at the moment. 170 grams of gram flour, which is the flour that makes this um, gluten free. Because I think gram flour is made out of chickpeas. Yeah, finely milled dried yellow split peas and chickpeas. Um, 65 grams of desiccated coconut, which I also already had. Oh, this is going to be a mess. Kipple, kipple, kipple. Kipple, kipple, kipple. Where is the desiccated? Oh, David's already got it out for me. Desiccated coconut, so what a waste of that time was. Um, baking powder. Baking powder. Ground cinnamon. I'm certain I had cinnamon, yeah, there we go. Um, and grated nutmeg. Now, I didn't have nutmeg, I had to buy nutmeg to grate the nutmeg. So that's that. I can go back in. This is the first time that I've tried a bit of the cake batter and thought, that doesn't taste very nice. <laughs> I don't know if it's the carrot or if it's the flour. It's not very sweet. Despite having 170 grams of soft dark sugar in it. But maybe the cream cheese will offset it. Anyway, that's in the Alexa. Set timer for 35 minutes. 35 minutes, starting now. So we'll see. Maybe my dad was right. But we see. This is the first time this has happened and this doesn't normally happen when I'm cooking, but I've bloody burnt it. And I think David said to me he'd knocked it and I said it's supposed to be on 160 and then it was at 250 so I don't know if he put it up to 250 he's not here so I can't blame him one of them is rescuable the other one is pretty fucking burnt on top this is the very burnt one. Oh god it's really burnt I wonder if I can take the top layer off the next the other one's fine it's definitely golden it actually looks worse on the camera than it does in real life bear in mind there's carrot in it so it is on the goldener side anyway. Oh, that's so annoying. Anyway, leave those for 10 minutes. And then I've got to make some cream cheese frosting. Let's get the cream cheese out now. Oh, it's the first time that's happened. Annoying. And I had definitely on my lap and everything. It was all going, here we go. Burnt cake. This one isn't burnt. 
So I'm going to chop it into six because I've got 12 little carrots. And <laughs> my chopping is not very good. Then I can space it out and that'll have a bit more surface area to cool down. Yeah, there's no way this is, I've made the cream cheese already. Oh, big bit of carrot. But there's no way it's ready to have that on yet. Mm. It's quite a savoury cake. There we go, there's number one, cooling down. Now this is the one that's quite, that is burnt on top, so what do I do? What does the, yeah, <laughs> underneath's not much better either. What should I do? Chop the, top the layer off? David, what would you do? You can't hear me. Oh, it's quite crumbly. This is me chopping the, the rim off. <laughs> It's quite crumbly. It's absolutely fine inside. You can see. I don't think I've got the skill set to do this. But she's going for it anyway. Such is the story of my life. I don't think I've got the skill set to do it, but I'll do it anyway. Okay. Well, there we go. I took off maybe a bit more than I thought I was going to. Let's chop that into six. I don't think it's... Well, it might do. There we go. There we go. Just wait for that to cool. But yeah, I've taken off. You can see how burnt it is on one side and then the inside is fine. But... Yeah, like I said, it's quite a savoury cake. I don't think this one will be going back on the the make again pile. Let me just taste some of the burnt stuff. Mm. No. Cool. I'm gonna put these in the bin. Now yeah, we just have to wait for these bits to cool a bit more. And then I've got cream cheese. Icing which is lovely. And then equal baby chocolate carrot. So now I'm gonna have a piece now. I'll give a piece to David and my dad to take to the cinema. And then we'll have a piece tonight. Me and mum and dad are coming in tonight now. So, oh, David's got to go to the shop to get more. Oh, he has been to the shop to get more meatballs. What really happened? Cool. I'm gonna do a little bit more reading while I'm waiting for that to cool then. Let's put some little chocolatey carrots on top of these guys. If she can ever get into them. Oh God. Yeah, All my chocolatey get some, the, the distribution of cream cheese on these is not fair. At all. The distribution of cream cheese upon my bits of cake is not at all fair. Oh, they look super cute though. Because I am super cute. They are super cute. Right. I'm going to make a cup of tea and try one then. Do you want one? Or are you going to wait till you get to the cinema? Yeah, I'll try one. Well, there we go, and that ends the tray bake section, David. Yeah, so was it muffins next? Muffin oh, tin. I'm excited and for a muffin. I'm excited because it, within this chapter, and I only ever look three ahead to keep myself excited, um, there's, why are you said so? <laughs> Sorry, that is a bit, I was, I was looking um, at the book mainly. There's some oh. savoury muffins in here. But the ones we'll be making next week, more cream cheese, David. Blackberry cream cheese yeah, muffins. Yeah, looking forward to them. Like a blueberry cheesecake muffin. Yeah. That's gonna be tasty. And then what's next? What's the next three then? And then after that, we've got intense chocolate salted caramel muffins. You won't like that. Oh, sounds a bit and cool. then after that, we've got Too raspberry sweet. lemon and hazelnut crumble. Nice. Muffins. Lovely. Yeah, blackberry cream cheese muffins next week, guys. Lovely, lovely, Tune lovely. in. <laughs> They're very cute, look. Yeah. Right. 
cake. Well, probably a little bit more cheese. <laughs> I gave you one with loads stuff. on, David. Look at this, this lovely <laughs> office space. What do you think? It's not sweet enough for you. Oh, okay. Well, that has surprised me. Mm. Yeah, it's not very sweet, but you said it wasn't going to be sweet. Um, I think it's probably sweeter than you think it is. Okay, well, I think the icing makes a lot of difference. No, I think the actual cake's quite sweet. But it's sweet not. like me. Mm. Sweet like chocolate, boy. I like it, Bob. Oh, good. I'll go I mean, get mine then. If I'm completely honest, I probably would eat it just without the cream cheese. Oh. Well, too late now. You've t previously, you've told me if I just tried a bit harder and made you more cream cheese, then you'd like all my cakes a lot more. Only ones with cream cheese on it. You're eating that separately? Yeah. That's white chocolate flavour. Mm. It's not white chocolate, it's white chocolate flavour. But I'm going to go and get my bit and try mine. I've had to relocate to a new part of the sofa, which I rarely sit in nowadays, just because the sun is just blaring over there. Don't want to put that there, that'll get too hot. Right, I'll try a little bit and then I'm going to read some more of... The amendments by Neve Mulvey. Let's go for it. Let's take this corner bit. Little bit overdone, maybe, where the, it was up too high. Hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Motorbike outside. That man is forever revving his motorbike. The other day when I was walking past, I was like, oh, and he said, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you know you're doing it then, babe. Um, yeah, nice. Let's crack on with a bit more reading. Hi. So, Dave's just gone to the cinema. I am going to do a little bit of painting by numbers. That's my women's prize, long list predictions. Um, for our anniversary, it's our first anniversary last year. David got me a paint by numbers of this picture of us when we were on our um, honeymoon in Norway, um, which is lovely. I mean, it's huge. <laughs> so it looks like this. That's upside down. It looks like this. And um, you get all the paints and you get a print of what it looks like and all of the numbers and everything. And then you get the brushes and you get this little key and it's pretty simple. I mean, the colours are, so it'll, if it says five on there, it will be, oh no, it's not. It's not as simple as I thought. So yeah, so number one is zero, zero, one. But then as you get further down, colours like 3029, that's number 48. So you get the stickers to add on to it too. Zero, zero, one is zero, zero, one. So that's fine. That looks much greener than I thought. Um, so I'm gonna go through and work that out. And then while I'm gonna do that, Oh, it's from a company called Number, Paint by Number, Paint by Number. Um, I've got the audiobook of Claire Keegan, Small Things Like These, um, that I've been hanging on to to read. Um, I've read this before, I very much enjoyed it. I very much enjoyed it, and then I ended up giving it away, which is insane, because it's always nice to have a little small book to reread. Also, it's set on the run up to Christmas, so you know how I feel about Christmas. Now, they're making it into a film with Killian Murphy in it. Um, so I've been wanting to revisit it. I don't know if that's out this year, but I've definitely seen like a review of it. So whether or not that means, oh, oh, 005, um, that it's out later on this year. Um, but yeah, so I actually thought it was a lot shorter than this. It's one hour 57, but I thought it was 50 minutes for some reason. So I can normally only do the old painting for about 40 minutes before my neck and back starts going, because you're really like hunched over. So I think I'll give it as long as I can and then I've got to wait for it to dry anyway so that I can pack it away before my mum and dad come around for dinner. But I thought that'd be a nice little thing to do, another Irish book to start reading. But first of all, I've got to put all of the numbers on these pots of paint. Um, so I will start by doing that and press play. Aidan Kelly.
God, I've been going for an hour and I have done. <laughs> I mean, I did have to put all the stickers on the pods, but look at that tiny little bit I've done. <laughs> it's very consuming. Um, I picked out, and also because you don't want to lean on other bits and you need to lean because it's so. Um, yeah, I feel like that, um, and my neck's not going to do it. So I do remember when I had one of these before, I had one that had cats on it. I think it, it took me hours and hours. Um, so I think this is going to be the same. But yeah, that's a tiny little thing there. So I'm going to wait for that to dry. Um, it's only just gone five. And I'm not expecting anyone back until half seven. So I think I'll start just pottering with dinner at about six. I'm gonna make a tomato mozzarella and basil salad to go with the meatballs and David got some garlic bread. So I think I'll start pottering around then. I am gonna make a video. Am I? I still don't know if I'm gonna make a video. I mean, this is all just so pointless because you guys would have seen if I'd have made a, a video about this. Uh, predicting the women's prize. Let me at the very least tell you the 15 I've predicted. 15, although, I've got a feeling of my 16th. So the 15 I've predicted, I won't give you any blurb of this because if I do make a video, you don't want to watch it all over again. Um, I've just said, so I'll just run off the list now. Domino's by Phoebe McIntosh, Chrysalis, Chrysalis by Anna Metcalf, Julia by Sandra Newman, Night Bloom by Peace Adzo Menzi, Tom Lake by Anne Patchett, The Fraud by Zadie Smith, Come and Get It by Kylie Reid, Pet by Catherine Chidgey, Family Law by Emily Acevedo. Emily Acevedo, is that her name? I've got that one. Uh, the Rachel Incident by Caroline O'Donoghue, Bellies by Nicola Denan, Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Quang. I mean. uh, Rosewater by Liv Little, The Memory of Animals by Claire Fuller, A Sign of Her Own by Sarah Marsh, and then that's 15, so I've got one more. And I think maybe I'm gonna pick The Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zang. So maybe I'll make a video on that tomorrow. Um, we're just doing chores and stuff tomorrow and I might do a little bit more of the old painting. Um, so yeah, those are the bit that, I could get them ready, couldn't I? The to encourage me to do it. Will I encourage me to do it or will I just go and read it? Oh, I'm really enjoying small things like these, by the way. Like I said, it's the second time I've read reading it. I've read it the first time around and I'm listening to it. The, the, the audio books of the Claire Keegan books um, are so good. Like they, yeah. And I, when I'm reading it, I'm thinking, yeah, I can completely see Killian Murphy playing this part. So very much enjoying it but it is a bit more Christmassy than I remember because it's set in like the run-up um to Christmas like the first few days and they're talking about like the town being decorated uh for Christmas and there's a choir performance and um he's trying to collect everybody's money before Christmas oh there's someone at the door bye hello happy Saturday you David's got quite the day ahead of him, haven't you, David? Certainly have. He is, uh, he's embarked upon a birthday cross-stitch. My most ambitious one yet. Project for his sister's birthday, which is mid-March. Um, and it's quite big, and he's done... It's very big. Uh, less than 10% of it. <laughs> so today, I mean, today, we've had a successful... It's, it's coming up for 12 o'clock, is it? No, no it's, it's quarter past 11. Um, we've been for a walk. We went to park run, except we park walked it um, because David's dad had a cardiac arrest at park run one year ago today. Today. Um, and they saved his bloody life, didn't they, David? They did, yeah, some of the volunteers. The volunteers worked on him until. Done CPR and got his heart beating again. And then, again. yeah, got them until and the ambulance the got there. So amazing. So it was a sort of commemorative thing. We're going round to David's parents tomorrow because tomorrow's the actual date it happened yeah. today would, it would be the year the year anniversary of the park run um so yes we've been for a walk so we walked around the he walked it today because he's been volunteering at park run since then so we walked it today um and yeah just got home and we're going to watch kin on there's eight episodes we're going to watch kin on iplayer it's been very well endorsed by our friends dad who very much enjoyed it mm -hmm. um and it's irish and it's the irish readathon i've got green on for the second day in a row and david's going to crack on with his cross stitch and i'm going to crack on with my cross stitch and i might do a little bit more um of my paint by numbers i'm still reading the amendments i've just sat and read about 20 pages while david was in the shower um i'm enjoying it i very much enjoyed hearing from the point of view of dolores who's nell's mother um 
and her not your friend Dolores. Not my friend Dolores, no. Not her mother's not called Nell. Her mother's called Philomena. Another very Irish name. Um but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it very much. This is my cross stitch. I'm almost done. I'm just gonna finish the strawberry and this is going to go I'm isn't it cute? Um I'm going to put this on a canvas bag. Um, I get sent quite a lot of canvas bags. I just want to show them how much I've done. So then at the end of the day, yeah, when we, we can have um, a look at that. So tomorrow morning, if you feel that's a little the bit top more. of the evil stepmother's head. It's very good, David. You're so neat. Lovely. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use a tote bag that I've been sent from a publisher. I've got a few, um, and I'm going to sew this onto it and then she'll have like a little she loves to play shops and then she'll have a bag that she can play shops with which i think is quite cute hopefully she'll enjoy that a lot right should we crack on with kin then and see although emma's just told me it's very very violent so we'll see how long we get on with it but yeah there's two whole series well i'll, I'll brendan i mean he's he... it's got brendan brady from hollyoaks in and he always looks like a bit of a psycho. He was a, a psycho, psycho in Derry Girls, wasn't he? Oh God, I really want to. We should rewatch Derry, Derry Girls. this Derry Girls. I mean, if we don't go well. with this, we can put some Derry Girls on. Yeah, but let, let's see. Right, here we go. Wish us luck. I'm going to have to talk quickly and loudly because the wash is on spin. 17 minutes left until the end of spin, but we've watched seven episodes of Kit. My elbows where I've just been cross stitching the whole time. I've made my mum an entire. Um, uh, Mother's Day present, which I'll show you shortly. David has completed one character on his Disney villains cross stitch and is halfway through Gaston. Um, so yeah, but I'm gonna make dinner now. But I did say I'd show you what we got on Gusto, didn't I? So um, well, this is for dinner for tonight, halloumi and courgette tray bake. And then we've also got this week, only got three this week, warm honey roasted roots and spelt grain bowl, which also looks nice. And then this one, Spanish style bean shatsuka with herby potatoes and garlic aioli. David will be into anything that's got garlic aioli. And just why I make dinner. Oh, this one also is a save and saver recipe, which means it's 50% uh, 50p off per person. So this is a pound cheaper than the others. Um, we've had a few of the save and savers, um, some of which we really, really like, including a Italian bean stew. And I think there's a curry we like on save and saver as well. So yeah, I'm gonna make this. It takes 35 to 40 minutes. And that's my cue to go because the Spins going. Well, dinner was lovely. And we're about 12 minutes into the last episode of season one of Kin. Oh, hi. Um, this is what I've made my mum. Baguette, cheese, croissant, red wine. France. <laughs> because she will be opening that in France because she's not here for Mother's Day. David, would you like to see how much this was an hour's worth of work? Yeah. Come and have a look. Is this my level of productivity? Yeah, have a look at how much took me an hour. Christ, what have you done? Oh, no, that's pretty good. Very because bearing in mind, time. you was probably spending some of that time organising yourself. Thank you, David. I was spending uh, so much time organising myself. Yeah, I think you've done very well, actually. Oh, that's cute. That's just, that's just called encouragement. Uh, David, would you... Oh, you're off screen. But there's Deppy. Um, I'm get, we're now going to... Um, I've, I've, I've done so much cross-stitching today. Um, I'm going to call it a day and just do a bit of painting while we watch the last bit of... Kin. And then tomorrow we're going to David's mum and dad's for the day. Um, because it's been one year since David's dad had a cardiac arrest. So we're going to celebrate his life. Only 21 and 18. Um, so yeah. So I might see you tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to have that book finished. I don't think I am. I'll probably have that. this cross stitch finished. Probably not. <laughs> I'm always sad. <laughs> Hello and happy Sunday. Can I wear green for the whole month? I mean, whenever I dry my hair, I get such a red neck. <laughs> that will calm down. Um, but yeah, whenever I dry my hair with a hairdryer, I get such a red neck. Um, will I wear green for the whole of the month? I mean, let's hope so. We're day three in and I've got green on again. This is a dress that I rarely pick up. Um, I don't feel like I like the neckline very much on me. It's a Joni dress and normally I feel like those things fit me perfectly. It's called the stuff that I love about Joni stuff, like elasticated here for weight, uh, elasticated sleeves because I've got quite big eyes. But there's just something about the way this sits. If I stand up, look, just feels it's a bit of a front. But hey, there's not many ways I can style this. Uh, basically, this is the only way. So I'll probably only wear this once this year. So there we go. And I thought I'd wear it 
to lunch at David's parents' house. Um, so that's what's going on. So David and I woke up this morning. His uh, cross stitch is going well. Um, No, it's not on. How did that get turned off? I've literally just been drying my hair. That's blowing my mind. Um, yeah, uh, it's going all right. So we watched another episode of Kin, season two. Would highly recommend. Also think I'm gonna try and watch Dublin Murder Squad this uh, month as well. And I'd like to re-watch Derry Girls, seeing as it's the Irish readathon. Try and involve myself in a bit more Irish culture. Why not? Um, so yes, yeah, so we'll have Kim finish this week, I imagine. But if you are Irish or have any fa favourite Irish films, do um, let me know. One of my favourite Irish films is Sing Street. Oh God, I might suggest we watch Sing Street again. I bloody love Sing Street. Um, actually, someone from Kin is in Sing Street. Oh, lots of people from Kin are in Sing Street, actually. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do that. But just wanted to check in. I will show you how much cross stitch we've done. Um, because I'm a little bit faster than David, we've decided that for every two um, figures that David does, I will do one. So he finished Gaston and the evil stepmother and I've done one of the ugly sisters and David started on the other ugly sister. And there's also some sort of like stars and stuff around it, which I think I'm gonna pick up when he's not doing it. He actually said, because I said, well, I've got, Dry my, I've got to dry my hair, style my hair and do my makeup before we go. So maybe go and do a bit more cross stitch. And he was like, no, nah, I don't really want to, but he is. Um, we're also going to pop to, oh no, I think I've wrapped up my mum's present without showing you. I don't think I showed you yesterday. Um, we're going to pop to my mum and dad's on the way to drop off her Mother's Day present. So yeah, and all of that chat about doing a predictions video for the Women's Prize for Fiction, I haven't had a chance to do it. So I'm just going to put up a post um, about it on Instagram so maybe you'd have seen that but yeah I was I was full of it weren't I talking about it I mean I did mention earlier didn't I what I thought my predictions were going to be so let's see how that works out for me but yeah I guess I'll see you at the end of the the day for a bit more of a a wrap up on everything else the answer to the question read the poem I still haven't done the bit of uh classical music but yeah Let's get straight in. Oh, do you know what? I might, oh no, I'm not gonna have time to finish it, but I'm also listening to the audiobook of um, Small Things Like These, who someone from Kin is gonna be in the film. <laughs> um, and I've got 29 minutes left, so maybe I'll just, because we're gonna leave before then, but maybe I'll just have another little listen to it while I'm doing that. Yeah, I think I will. One moment, need to get stuff. <laughs> Sunday night, we're back from a day at David's parents' house, lots of lovely food and played some card games and stuff. And now David's in the bath, I've, I've had a bath. This is how far we've got with the cross stitch. So it's coming along well. David's done the evil stepmother and Gaston. I've done this ugly sister. Also these names are awful, aren't they? David's in the middle of doing this ugly sister. And there's lots of sort of like swirly bits around. So I'm gonna do the swirly bits around with this light on because oh, <laughs> not at the moment. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd listen to the piece of classical music whilst I do that. And then we can have a discussion. Cause I was like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to do it. But I was like, oh, why don't you do it now? So the date is the 3rd of the 3rd, 3rd of March. The piece is Carmen. Carmen's one of David's dad's favorites. Suite number one, three intermezzo by George Bizet who lived between 1838 and 1875. It says, I find it heartbreaking that George Bizet died believing his opera Carmen to be a failure. The premiere took place on this day in 1875 and was badly received by the critics, who had no taste for its supposedly low life subject matter. Exactly three months later, the composer dropped dead from a heart attack. He was only 36. It was also his sixth wedding anniversary. It was not long, however, before Carmen began to be recognised for the exceptional piece of lyric theatre that it is. Saint Saëns and Tchaikovsky were ardent admirers. Even Wagner, not exactly one to love bomb his fellow composers, gave it grudging praise. Brahms, meanwhile, attended over 20 performances and apparently considered it the best thing that had ever been seen on a stage, perhaps ever. I'm with them. 
Bazette blends nuance and attractive music with an unerring instinct for drama. By operatic standards, the characters are subtly drawn. Here's the Gypsy Carmen in all her reckless vulnerability. There's Don Jose, we'll meet him later on in the year, something to be excited about, in his journey from love. Love-struck soldier to misogynistic abuser, neither of them uh, from the empty operatic caricatures they might easily have been. Carmen went on to become one of the most successful operas of all time. After Bazette died, two concert suites of music from its score were assembled. They too have remained favourites in the orchestral repertoire. This gorgeous intermezzo reflecting Don Jose's state of love-struck bliss is taken in a rare moment of calm before Act 3. Although don't be fooled, it's an opera. It's all going to go horribly wrong. Well, let's listen to it then. I've just had to turn the heat off. I was really cold when I got in the bath. And now I'm bloody boiling. Right, Carmen Suite number one. That was lovely, wasn't it, Dappy? It was really lovely. It felt like the middle of a Disney film or something. It was just so beautiful and sort of romantic it was lovely it was really lovely god i've had a i've had a bath and taken off my makeup but my mascara receives a needs a second scrubbing sometimes i'm getting bits coming off me now right so i didn't do any of that i did thread my needle and pick yellow to do the little bits in between so that's what i'm going to do and whilst i do that i'm going to listen to the rest of um to the very last 19 minutes of small things like these by claire keegan which i've absolutely loved even more so the second time round. It's just so full of warmth amidst the sort of horror that's going on and furlough the, the chat that we're following and his family are just so in, like, there's just so much warmth there to use that term again and love there compared to what's going on at the, the mother and baby home. Um, and yeah, it just feels like we're really there we're really looking in on something i think it's just the amount of time dedicated to a small small period of time and yeah i can't really go on too much about the plot because it's so short to tell you aspects of the plot would be to to tell you the whole thing but yeah it feels very special i've i've, I've loved i loved reading it but I lo i've loved the audiobook in the same way that i've loved um the audiobook of so late in the day as well um I'm so looking forward to getting Foster from the library and I've also got Antarctica which is a collection of short stories but I'm wondering now whether or not I should um, see if I can get them on audio just because I've had such a lovely time with those but that's what I'm going to carry on doing um, but let's answer the question and oh I didn't finish the amendment so the plan was in order to get my prize from my box which is read an arc I had to finish an, an, uh, an advanced reader's copy of something now I've, I've read 214 pages since Friday so that's pretty good I'm still over 100 pages away, so I will not be getting my prize. And I didn't even start. You don't know what war is. So, um, yeah, so I won't be getting my prize. But there'll be another week, I'm sure, where I finish a, an, an arc. Um, but the question, I haven't thought any more about this question since I, since I picked it up. But let's have a think now. So, if you could accompany any fictional character on their journey, quest, voyage or adventure, who would you choose? And I said, didn't I, I wanted to pick somebody whose fictional quest involved uh, lots of lay-ins and eating lots of yummy food but I can't think of anyone <laughs> that does that fictional quest or adventure I'm looking at some of my favorite books and thinking about whether or not I'd like to join them on their journey quest voyage or adventure god I suppose in the book big bones what are you doing baby bluebell the main character in there goes on a journey of sort of self-discovery and she's very self-confident in herself um but on transforming other people's views on how she views her body i feel like i could i would have loved to have done that myself when i was 14 so maybe i'll pick her from laura dockrell's big bones which i really really love um but yeah any other although the quest that the characters go on in um, by Ash Oak and Thorn, um, the sort of nature-filled quest that feels very that was very magical to me by Melissa Harrison. So yeah, one of those two loved it. But would love to hear your answers to those questions, please. Um, and then the, the poem for today, first one we're reading out of spring, and it felt a little bit spring. It was still very cold today, but it felt very springy. Oh, this is a great one. So the the, the choices are Anger Against Beast by Wendell Berry. Or the next one's called Dear March, Come In by Emily Dickinson. Um, and like today felt like a bit like spring. There was a lot of green around. I saw a lot of 
daffodils in people's gardens and stuff and I went and did my uh, outfit of the day posting David's mum and dad's gardens and they've got a little bit of blossom and some buds and stuff coming through so yeah we'll go for this so this is Emily Mar uh, Emily Dickinson's Dear March Come In and this poem observes the paradox of the seasons Emily Dickinson both praises and blames March for its beauty and its brevity Dear March, come in. How glad I am. I hoped for you before. Put down your hat. You must have walked. How out of breath you are. Dear March, how are you? And the rest? Did you leave nature well? Oh, March, come right upstairs with me. I've so much to tell. I got your letter and the birds. The maple never knew you were coming till I called. I declare how red their faces grew. But March, forgive me. And all those hills you left me to hew. There was no purple suitable. You took it all with you. Who knocks? That April, lock the door. I will not be pursued. He stayed away a year to call when I am occupied. But trifles look so trivial as soon as you have come. That blame is just as dear as praise and praise as mere as blame. I liked that a lot. What did you think, Dab Dab? Just looking up, up at the ceiling. That's what she thought. Right, I'm going to finish listening to small things like these and continue with the cross stitch. Um, thanks for joining me for another Friday reading vlog and I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye!